everyone, this is Vicki at Messy Table Studio here with another video about the Operation Reprint coffee book, which in the last video, this is exactly where I left off. They were rubber band together, everything's marked, poked, beaten, <laughs> and it's ready to go. Um, all right, so what I did was I assembled some of the things that I use when I bind books, both the three whole pamphlet stitch, uh, and the um, Coptic, which I really like the Coptic stitch. I really like um, that the fact that you can open up the book flat. And when you do mixed media and you want to paint something or you want to glue something and you want to get it down in the crease, you can't very well do that if the book doesn't open up all the way. So one of the best methods to use is either the, uh, what do they call it, the three three-part book where you do the front, the back, and then the spine is separate, so there are three pieces. That's another one that will also open up flat, but you still have to sew your signatures in. With this, the way people gussy it up is they do fancy stitching on the spines, um, or they use colored thread, or they will color the ends here and then use a, a contrasting thread for it. There's a million things you can do. And there are a million videos on how to sew a Coptic stitch book. One of my favorite videos on how to sew a Coptic stitch book is from C. Lemon. I will say that again because I cannot say enough about her tutorial. It's very up close, which my camera cannot do. And it's a really good video. And she has videos on two needle Coptic. I have not done that yet. I'm still stuck on 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 learning just the one needle. <laughs> I can handle one thing at a time, so that's it. All right, so let's get started with the basic stuff that I use. There are different kinds of needles that you can use. Um, there's really really long needles. Evidently, mine has gotten up leg, gotten legs, and walked off. I don't know where it is. Um, I have not tried to use that one, but I have it. Then these guys don't belong in there. You could use these, but I think they're like not a great option for Coptic binding. Then there are large hold needles. There are, oh, that's a sewing needle. <laughs> I also have a curved head needle in here too. Where is it? A flat head needle. This one right here. This one I think is more for, I don't know if you can see it. See, it's curved. I think it's more for upholstery than anything else. And then, like I said, there's pointy, blunted, large, small. I mean, you. thing is, is that what's really important for me, for me, is the eye of the needle. Because the thickness of the thread that I use, if it doesn't go through the eye of the needle, it doesn't matter how great the needle is, right? All right, so that comes to another point. Oh, well, here, let's go to these. I separate them. And then you can buy curved needles. Now a lot of these are for furniture, um, but people use them when doing the Coptic stitch. I've tried the, using them a few times for the Coptic stitch. Eh, jury's still out for me. You can use them and try. It's depending on what your comfort level is. And for me, it's still using just a straight needle. Although I have done several with the, um, the curved needle, but I do prefer the straight needle. Okay, so there's that. Let me put these back in here. I keep all of them in this. All right, a lot of these needles have come from uh, Amazon, fabric stores, anywhere where they sell needles, where there's any kind of hand sewing or quilting done, you will find needles. This company, Lino, um, they have a ton of needles that are for books. And here's what it looks like when you get it. They take a small piece of corrugated cardboard and they put the needles inside the corrugated cardboard when they ship it. So it's not, there are no needles sticking out when you get it other than you see the eye of the needle. These are small needles 
and I think there's one or two missing out of here that are probably mixed in with that stuff in that container. So this is how you get your needles when you buy needles from this company. I like their products. Um, I just, they are a bookbinding company. They deal in a lot of bookbinding stuff. All right, so here's these quality needles from 2.125 inch. Oh, they tell you how many inches they are. They are used in sewing books. It says that they are slightly blunted point, reduces snagging, easy to handle length. They're longer, so yes, they are easier to handle. So that's these. Let's get this out of the way. Then we come to thread. Um, I've seen people use sewing thread. My all-time favorite is not, well, my all-time favorite is this. It's DMC, it's size 5 cotton. Um, the, what color do I call it, the Ecru. I used all of it and I have an empty spool that I use for mark making now. This great, it makes plastic piece makes a great mark making tool for mixed media. So I've used all of it. I have blue and red and then I had the Ecru and I really like using this for binding books depending on the size of the um, signatures. So I like this. This is a linen that is very rough. It's very thick and it's very good for book binding depending on the thickness and the kind of book that you're binding. This is wax linen. This is also from the Lino Company and when you buy it you get it in a little box and you get three spools. This is already pre-waxed, so you don't have to run it through anything to get it to, to slide through the paper. It is very waxy, and it works great. Um, I can't say enough nice things about this stuff, but I don't use it for every project. Then there is the menagerie. When I did jewelry, I bought lots of different kinds of threads, and then I started binding books, and I watched some videos where they mentioned what they used. This is gray flax. Um, you can use this for book binding. You can use it for jewelry, lots of things. This is a multi-purpose sort of stuff. I have some of this. Then I have lots of different colored, um, oh, what do you call this stuff? I don't know if it's linen or, I, it's some kind of wonderful stuff that I've used for years and I cut it up and, and it comes on um, boards and I cut it all up and put it kept the colors separated you know I really messed with them on the cards this is cording that a lot of people use for jewelry but I use it for book binding there's more here is a very heavily waxed thread here I see I cut up the packaging so I have no idea what the company is but it's very it's waxy it's not the same as this the thickness is a, it's a little thicker this is thinner and then there's all the little bits that are left over from doing projects I use a lot of these for the three hole pamphlet stitch all right so there's my collection of threads for that and then there is this. Again, the Lino Company puts out linen thread in 50. Uh, now, I was gifted one of these and I bought one of these. These are um, 50 yards of 35 slash 3 gauge unwaxed, unbleached linen thread for book binding. I love this thread, but it's very thin. This is for I think more traditional bookbinding than what I do. And it's it's almost like a sewing thread, but a wee bit heavier, but a little thinner than this. So it's kind of in between this and regular sewing thread. And I've seen people use regular sewing thread. I just happen not to use it because I don't for me, because the way I pull and tug, I don't think it's sturdy enough. Alright, so there's all of that. Now, when you get a thread that is not waxed and you're having difficulty pulling it through the paper, 
one of the nicest things is to use this. Now, a lot of people use this for traditional sewing and quilt making, but this is a, um, a beeswax disc. It's just inside here, and then it has holes in here and holes in here. It's just slipped inside there, kept here. You take your thread and your needle, and you slip your needle through here, and you drag your thread in here. This is why it's cut up on the edges the way it is, is from dragging different kinds of thread through it. At last, I've had it... Let's see, how long have I had this thing? I think I've probably had this 15, 20 years. I've had this a long time. I use this for um, sewing, not for book binding. It's any kind of thread you can drag through there. You can do it with or without the needle. It doesn't matter. Usually I do the needle because that makes it easier to grasp it and pull it through. So there's that. Ureti den. Okay. It is extremely important that when you do the Coptic stitch that you put your pages in the order that they were stacked in and poked because you have them lined up in the order you want them in the book and that's the way they ought to be sewn in the book, right? Okay. You can either start front to back, back to front. It matters not which way you start. You just have to start. Alrighty, so I need to pick a needle and I need to decide on the kind of thread I want to use. So this paper is not a thick, heavy paper. It's I don't want to use the word delicate, but it's thin paper enough that it, I don't think it'll take a big, heavy, heavy thread. But on the other hand, sewing thread would be too skinny for this. Let me have a sip of coffee. This is more snug. Well, sometimes when you use these, I think it strips the wax off the thread because the eye of the needle is so thin. that it, it, I know you can't see it, but it strips the wax off into the, into the eye of the needle. If you're, the eye isn't really large, then it, it, as you drag the thread through, it strips the wax off the thread. There's still some on there, though. I'm sorry. Ugh, a lot of noise. All right, let's see. Where's my needle? Here it is. As I was saying, you start it always either at this end or this end. It's always got to be the end. Needle through. And then you just pull. There are some schools of thought. You can tie a knot now, you can do it later. I mean, there's a million different ways. Because this is thicker thread, I don't want to do a big honk of knot because it always leaves a bump in your paper and in your book. But the knot's gotta be big enough, it's not gonna slip through the hole you just made with the needle. All right, so there's that. The end, we've got to find the end of the thing again. <laughs> All right, so I do it where everything's facing me. See, Lemon sets her stuff flat down on the table, but her camera also shows you what it looks like when she sews that way. Mine will not, so we do it this way. All right, so here's my cover. Take my thread, because I've already gone through the middle of the paper. Go through the end. And don't pull too hard because you will jerk that knot right through that hole. Believe me, I've done it a million times and you don't want that to happen because then you got to tie a bigger knot because now the hole's gotten larger. So I go over and there's a, see the gap? The whole point of doing Coptic is to make sure that you go underneath the gap either from the right to the left or the left to the right, whatever your preference is, it matters not. So you don't want to jerk it so tight that when you open your book that the, 
the thread cuts into the paper. And I've had it where I've pulled so, so hard that I've ripped from this hole to this hole. And then what do you do? Then it stops everything. Then I go back and I have to glue gingerly between these two, or you have to put washi tape on it or scotch tape on it because you're done. When it rips the paper like that, that's the end of that project for a little bit. After you stop crying, <laughs> then you finish. <laughs> All right, so in the beginning, it's really easy because you can just go right through the end. The rest of them are not this easy. You just go underneath that gap. See that gap? You go underneath here and up. And you pull. And when you pull, you don't want to jerk it real hard. But you do want to make it snug enough that your book isn't like wah, 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 wonkly, wonkly. So... You've gone around, and then you go back into the same hole that you started with. And it's really hard to find the hole later on. Now, you can find the hole. It's pretty easy. Let's see, I like going this way. Because I can see the hole easier this way. Because it's close, it, it's further away to me, but I can also see it better. All right. So then you take this and you go in the hole. As you can see, I'm going in the hole. There's the paper. There's my lovely little knot. And you just pull it through. Then the next thing is to go into the next hole. And you do it from the inside of the book. The next hole, whoops, poked in the wrong place. Oh my goodness. There we go. Like I said, getting the cover started is the most awkward part and doing the end. So you have to separate it a little bit. And you can either go in this way or you can go from the bottom. I go from the bottom. Again, it doesn't matter, but whatever you do, do it consistently. Then you put your thread on this side, you scoot your needle in between, and you gotta pick up that little thread in the middle. And you just pull until you got a lovely little knot. Well, it's not really a knot. See, and this is what you got in the middle. You've started here, you've moved on to the next one. Then you go in that same hole and you pull and then you go to this one which is the beginning of the three holes that I poked
I did not. So I need to pull this back out and make sure that I go in the same hole that I was going in the other side. Just pull a little bit. This is too loose. So I just go through and I'm going to pull the knot up because it's not snug enough, but I don't want to rip it. Okay. Then you go through the end and this is where it gets different. This is where you have to do something different. All right, so I'm going to pull up through here, and it always gets caught on the end of the book. Never fails. You go through here, just like you've done all the others, except for you don't have to go around. You can just go right through the end. See, look. Wait, let me get through here first. Sorry. <laughs> Where is it? There it is. And this is where you stop. You don't poke it back through here, through the other side, because where are you going to go with it? So this is where you add the next signature. All right. So my book is like this. I take the next signature, and I line it up so all the holes are lined up to this part. I'll stick my fingers in here to make sure I have dead center. And you're going to take the needle and you're going to go into the end here. Because this is how you attach the next signature. All right, have I got it right? All right side up, everything's cool. And you just pull it through. You don't do anything, nothing fancy. You just go to the next hole. You know how you wrapped it around all the others? You will catch this the next go round. Pull this through. And this is where the easy, easier part starts. All right, so you know you had a, um, you have this where you first started. So the object is, this is what makes it look like it's braided. You take the needle, you go between the cover and the first signature. And this is where it gets tricky. Everybody has their own way of doing it. You can do it where you have to pry this up and wiggle the needle through. Or I think C. Lemon does it where she lays it flat on the table and does it that way. I do not do it like that. I drop the needle through to where you see it through there on the other side and pull. And then you can drop the needle back through the other side. So essentially what you've done is you've wrapped your thread around the last signatures thread and you've, you've, you're going to make what looks like braided it's, it looks braided when you get done. It looks very cool. You open up the signature so you can find the middle because you're about to poke the needle through. You don't want to stab yourself. So you take it and you put the needle right back through the same hole that started all of this. Hopefully you can find it. Sometimes it's hard to see. Poke it back through and pull. And there you are. There's your segment, second a good starty second signature. Then you just repeat this all the way down to the end and that's when you're going to do something a little different on the end. You separate the cover. Basically what you're doing is you're wrapping the thread around the last signature's thread. Okay, so I'm going to slip the needle down through here. Uh, where is it? <laughs> Here we go. Taking this. We're going back through the other side because you're making a loop around this part right here. 
Make the loop around, tighten her up just a tad. Then you got to find dead center again, which is not where well, here he is. This it is right there. Stick the needle back through the same hole you started with. And sometimes you end up making a double poke. It's been done. Then it goes back through the same hole, you pull, and that basically makes a loop around the last signatures loop. So you're getting a loop around a loop. And you can go to the next one. Let me stretch this out a bit. Okay, this is where it gets different. <clears throat> Excuse me. You go out the hole through the center. You go in, well, you can just slide it in. You don't have to go through it and around. But you have nowhere to go now. You can't stick it back through here because how are you going to get the next thing that you're on? Let's see, this one goes this way. You take the next signature, you lay it up here, you open it up to the center, and then you go ahead and just go right through this one. And if it makes you feel better, you can use a thimble. I just don't find thimble, thimbles very comfortable. Although, they're safer. <laughs> right. You can't go back through here to go around, so you'll catch it the next time. I, I promise you will. All right, you go back through the middle, through the next hole. All you're doing is basically is just making sure this is attached on the end. You do all the heavy lifting through here, and you will catch something here and then you will put the next signature on and it, you just go back and forth and back and forth. Right, so here's the next signature. All right, now you instead of putting between the cover and the first signature, you do the second signature and you put your thread on this side and you this is where a lot of people like the curved needles. And let me let me change to a curved needle so you can see. It is easy for this part, but it's hard for the other parts. So, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the others, whatever you're comfortable with. I don't happen to like the curved needles, but that's just me. And the holes are usually smaller. That one went in easy, which never happens. All right. Let me put the, set this aside because I still like the straight needle better. All right, so you have your curved needle. This is where having a curved needle works to your advantage. All you have to, instead of trying to wiggle the straight needle through there, all you have to do is take the round needle, loop it around, push it and pull. I mean it's just that simple. And there's your loop. But this part is the part I don't like. You find the hole to go back through and then you have to remember you can't just grab it like this because it's rounded. And that part I have stabbed myself a million times at these looped needle, these um, curved needles, which I don't, like I said, I don't particularly care to use these. These are not my thing. All right. Good enough. And now you have to stick it through here again. The next signature. 
I mean the next hole up. And again, you know, you're used to going like this and now you have to go like this. And then all you have to do is move your thread over and go in between the next, the signature you just finished. You go through here and you just give it a little push and it's right through. This part's easy. It's just, just trying to remember not to stab yourself. And I've stabbed, see, I've stabbed myself enough times that's why I do not like the curved needles. And then, just like all the other ones, you gotta come back through that hole. Okay, while I was waiting for my um, camera to load the stuff onto the disc, I went and started the Roomba, made sure it was doing its job, warmed up my coffee, and now, <laughs> now I'm here to do this. So I did a couple of um, spaces here. I'm on to the, the next part, where remember I told you that on the ends, that's where you do special stuff, All right? So I put the hole through the last one, I mean poke the needle through the last one, pull, let me stretch this out a little bit more, and then remember how you didn't go around the last one because you're you're adding the, the last page on there, but this is where you catch the last one. So you go in the last one just like you did all the others. This is usually where I stab myself. <laughs> and remember, you can't go back through that hole on either end. You always must put the next signature on. And something else you need to remember. Always look before you sew something on to make sure your stuff is right side up. I went through a whole book once at one time and wasn't paying attention. I was watching TV and sewed the whole book in upside down. <laughs> You know how they say there's no tears in knitting, no tears in arting? I beg to differ. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put the next signature on, which is this one. So we go here. And remember, you don't do anything the first go-round on an end. It's the second go-round where you get to loop through to make sure that it's attached well. So here's this, the next signature. And it's right side up. Yay! Even at 3 o'clock in the morning, I got it right. And I'm going to stab myself with this silly needle. All right, so I put the needle through, and it's not through the center of the paper. Or it's supposed to be. There it is. I feel it on my finger. All right, here we go. And just pull it through. And remember...
at the end, um, she has you sew in the last signature and the cover at the same time. So instead of going into the signature like you would all the others, you go in from the front, the top, and you go in here and you pull. Then you go into the last signature, you know, that last little place there. You go in through here. And yes, the curved needle does make some things easier, but when you're trying to poke through the paper or pick the needle up, it is not so wonderful then because you stab yourself. Well, some people do. Uh, that would be me. All right, then after you do that, then you have to put... And this is where I don't really care for the curved needle. You have to find the hole in the signature, the last signature that you have covered up because, you know, you have. And you have to hope when you stick it in there and see, and it did not, and is this upside down? Yeah, it's right side up. I did not get the needle into the proper place so it did not go in the hole so we're gonna have to pick it up and see if we can figure out in one of her videos she does say sometimes you have to kind of scooch the knot over so you can see this the hole in the signature uh it's a little harder when it's brown paper there's the hole right there i hope i get it in there right and it's I know it's hard for you guys to see because it's it's hard for me to see. And guess what? Still again, not in the hole. So I'm going to ditch the curved needle because this does not work for me. I'd rather take a stab at it. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. I've had two cups of coffee. And the sun's up and I had a shower and I'm dressed and I look like an adult. All right. So let's go with this one. A little bit longer. Let's see if I can get this through here. I imagine a lot of the wax on this is already worn off. Oh, look at that. First time. Maybe that's an omen of how lovely my day is going to be today. Hmm. All right, so Let's see if I can get it in the signature, the last signature. Oh, I was sticking it in a different signature. All right, you have to make sure, I guess, that everything is down on the table because you have got to get into that last signature that you can barely see. I think. Nope. All right, so I'm going to open it up. See, it's not even, I'm looking for the wrong hole. So I'm going to take the needle and stab the holes again to make sure. Now these I don't have to worry about. It's the last hole on this one and the last hole on this one. I'm going to repoke. There we go. Alrighty, let's see if we can make this work. Urgh. So is this right side up? I don't want it to be upside down after I've gone through all this trouble. <laughs> and I've had that happen more than once where I was, oh, look at this, where I was watching TV and I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing and I sewed it in upside down. And it couldn't have been at the end of the book, it was at the middle. <laughs> so I had to take the book out apart and redo it. All right, so hopefully, Let's see. For me, this is the worst part. There's that silly thing right there. All right, I'm going to pull it out so I can see the hole. Bing, bing, bing. One, two, three, four. I think, where's the... All right, here we go. So here is the hole. So I'm going to try to look for the hole. Where's the hole? Wow, 
you know what it is, is I don't have any light on where I'm working because of the glare for you guys, and so I can't see what I'm doing. Did I get it in the hole? Oh, no, wrong hole. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna turn my light down. Yes, it's gonna have glare, but at least I can see. I'm sorry. I have to see what I'm doing. I feel like I'm sitting in the dark here. I think maybe this time. No, <laughs> no, but it's okay. I'm gonna take this pull it through and then I'm going to put it through the hole here where it belongs. I'm going to flip it over and take a look at it. Yep, is good. All right, now we can go through the rest of them pretty much the way we did that one. So you have to go through and I do it this way. Actually, I should do it the way she does it, right? All right, she goes through here first. She goes through the hole here first. Then the last signature that you did before the last signature, the second to the last signature. And this is where having a curved needle is an advantage because you can't see what you're doing. So you have to drop it through because in order to get the needle to come back the other side, you're really trying to push it through a place that doesn't have a lot of give. So, you gotta flip the book over. There's the needle. Bring it around and back through this empty spot. You know, you're poking it through two signatures. You bring it around and then you gotta stab it in a hole that you can barely see because your signature is falling down. Okay, where's the hole in the signature? Let me find the signature. I always find this part very tricky. No matter how many times I watch C. Lemon's video to remind myself, I find it very tedious and I don't enjoy doing the last part because I find it difficult. And I am not about difficult. And then I'm gonna stab myself in the knuckle in a minute. Okay, there it is. Where's the other? Oh, see, look at that. It did not go through. I did not get it through here. All right, so I got to unthread it. And I need to pull it out. And then... to get it out of the last signature that I sewed it in. Let's see if it's going to work. There we go. I only looped it around the signature. I didn't get all the way around. And there's that. So let's take it out of there. And then we have to take it. See, this is why you need to be very careful and not watch TV while you're doing this and you're paying attention to what you're doing because, all right, so it did go through. Maybe I was looking at a different piece of paper. Hmm, that's weird. No, nope, it went through. It just didn't look like it did. Okay, let's try this one more time. All right, through the page, uh, where's my, okay, then you go through the paper, and here, and you loop it around the last signature that you get went through, and this is where I struggle. See, this is where you should have this circular needle is that makes it easy to go in through there, but it's also a pain trying to find the hole. So the best thing to do is go in between the signatures. 
This is part is very confusing because it's hard. Where's my needle? In between the signatures. Where am I going here? Where's my needle? <laughs> ah, la 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 la. Go in between the signatures. Ah, this is where a symbol comes in handy if I would like to wear one. All right, so I got that wrapped around there, and now I have to go back into the first signature. That hole that's like underneath here that you can't see. So literally, you're taking a stab at it and praying that you get it in there. And I did not. There it is through that piece of paper. So I have to take it out and try and scoot this over so I can see and pray I get it through there. And what did I do? I got it in! All right, I'm back through the hole here. My gracious, what a chore. And she sticks it through here, loops it around, and you go through the second to the last signature, because the last signature is the one with the hole, you have to poke the hole through right there. This one right here. Ugh. Like that. Then you pull it, and then of course when you pull it taunt, then you can't find the hole to go back into for the last signature, because you've not really poked anything in it yet, and it is hard to see. And I'm sure it's hard for you guys to see with that light in your face, but I am sitting here in the dark now. Please let this be the right hole. Please, please, no. Nope. Wrong one. I don't know where I ended up poking it, but it wasn't in the right place. Nope. I've poked the needle in somewhere. I just don't know where. All right. Let's hold this up here. Oh, and the, uh, there's the hole. Yep, there we go. And then go through the hole in the book. Then through the second to the last signature. And through the hole of the very last signature. I can scoot it over here to see it. See, because it's scooting around and it is hard to see that little white mark. Where is it? I'm assuming that it's under there somewhere. Nope, that's not the one. All right, let's see. It's this one. I hope that's the right one. And it is. I think maybe I should have gone back and remarked the white on the signature so I can see it a lot better. All right, so then we're going to poke this through the cover hole. Loop it around the second to the last. And kind of twist it a little bit. And then look for that white mark I made in the last signature. And I think I see it. Well, I think I saw it. It's more like it.
All right, yeah, stuck the needle in something. Yep, oh, wrong one. That might be the right one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, watch me run out of thread. God, I'm gonna run out at the end. Oh no! <laughs> Pooey. Oh, come on, come on, come on, go up. I'm sorry, I'm whispering. <laughs> it is sheer frustration. I assure you. Okay, there, go sideways. Now back in two. Oh, I missed the. <laughs> I missed the cover hole. Alrighty. Like I said, maybe you guys will have an easier time of it than I do. I always seem to do everything the hard way. Seriously. <clears throat> A tui. Okay. There we go. All right. Let's try this one more time and let's get it right this time, dear. In the hole. Oops. I'm scoot that around down there. All right. In the hole. Up through the other one. We skipped a step. There we go. Now we need to go underneath the second to the last. I'm not going to have enough thread. <laughs> second to the last one. Oh my god. I just want to cry. Okay. Whale well, hick. That's not the way it was supposed to happen. Was it? Nope. All right, there's that. And then poke it through here. Uh, <laughs> look at that. Whew. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Go through the hole in the book. You can just slide it in from the end if you're really good. I am not that good, but I'm going to try. All right. Oh my gosh, I don't think this is going to work. All right, into the last one. Whew. Good grief. <laughs> what I tell you guys about if you think you're getting close to the end, go ahead and tie it off and start with a new one. <sighs> Do as I say, not as I am currently doing. <laughs> what a bonehead. Alrighty. So let's see if we can get this needle to go through that hole. The last one. Is it in there? <gasps> Ta-da! We're done. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to measure this just so I feel like... Alrighty. I had... Two and a half inches left. This is where you tie gingerly tie the knot <laughs> with tweezers. Oh, that's a mess. Okay, that's not going to work. All right, let's try this again. because I'm going to make it. Uh, I am determined to make this work. All right, there's a very ugly little knot. 
And I might have to dab a little glue just to make sure it doesn't come undone, but I think it's going to stay. If not, I'll have to do the last page over. Okay, so here we are. <sighs> breathe, Vicki, breathe. <sighs> okay. <laughs> so here we go. There's the Coptic coffee book all stitched together. The kiss and a prayer. There's a knot there. And that's the ending knot. I would have liked to it have it down here, but it's okay. That, my friends, is done. <laughs> Please go watch Sea Lemons tutorial. Don't use me as your example. <laughs> All right, so over the course of X amount of days, weeks, months, whatever it's going to take, I'm going to start filling this book up with coffee memorabilia and coffee stuff, coffee related things. Um, with all the other, with all the stuff that I cut out and pockets and tip-ins and tip-outs and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to start working on it a little bit at a time. I'm not going to do it all this week to get it finished. I'm going to take a breather from the, um, experience. <laughs> and then I'll be back to put stuff in it. Okay, so that's it for now. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.